good evening. I'm Andre Pfizer. Welcome to Profoundly Speaking, our virtual global sessions that we conduct on Sundays. Sometimes we have it at noon and sometimes 6.15, especially if I have to perform musically in Beaumont, we will meet in the evenings at 6.15. So I want to be, I want to say thank you to all of you who are supporters of this life's work, not just financially, but those of you who are supporting with intentional, authentic life application and pursuit. Hey, Mary. Hey, Kathy, Jason, everyone who's on. I want to personally thank all of you who are seeking your best life. Hey, you bet. You are seeking the life of Christ that you were established in before the foundation of the world. You're not seeking mere happiness, but you're seeking the feeling that God had when he made you, which produced you. Because some of us are seeking happiness outside of the thought that God had when he created us. So whenever we seek happiness outside of our assigned realm of creation, hey, we usually get distracted and we get caught in a maze because we're seeking happiness or instead of realizing what God thought of us and made us, we're seeking something outside of it, hoping it would be God. Uh, but I want to personally thank all of you who are pursuing and realizing you're not just chasing every day. You are realizing the power of God in you. The kingdom is in you. Jesus said, it's not out there over here. The kingdom Everything that God is, it's you. Everything that God is, is you. When you despise yourself, though, or when you feel that you are illegitimate, uh, you won't see yourself in the fullness of God when you perceive that you are illegitimate. I wrote something earlier. I was in Beaumont, and I wrote that the divine nature can't make anything less than what it is. The, the divine nature of God can't create anything less than its own nature. It can't produce anything less. So God creates his equals. God created his equals. Write that down. God creates his equals. Now, you may be nervous about that information and you may see it as spiritual rhetoric, but I'm speaking truth practical, tangible reality. When I had, when I, I, I didn't have my children, I carried the seed of my children and I transferred the seed of my children to my wife and whatever I was, my wife gave back to me. My wife didn't give back anything less than me. When I was intimate with my wife for my children, she, she gave back to me everything that I am. Not everything I hope to be, but everything that I am. When God became intimate with the earth, he made the body in from the ground and he breathed himself in the dirt. God cannot create anything less than what he is. So you can't take God's glory away. You are God's glory. You can't steal glory. You and I are the glory of God. And I want to personally thank those of you who are realizing that you are God's glory every day. And you're not pursuing it. You are realizing it and allowing what you are realizing to change the way you live your life. It's not only changing your life. It's changing the way you exist in life. It's not just changing your events. It's, it's changing the way you live. How many of you could say that this truth has changed the way you live? Not just changed your day, but it has changed consistently the way you exist. It has not just brought things to your mind, it's changed the way you live. And when this truth has changed the way you live, it changes the way people who have known you relate to you because you no longer live the way that they could attach their own 
craziness to it. Am I making sense to you? I'm sitting here just scratching everything. I'm scratching eyes and everything. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah. How many of you could say that? God has changed the way I live. When I, what you have realized in the truth have totally reached, recalibrated the way you live as a human being. How many of you could say that? Raise your hand. I live differently as a human now. I live differently. It's not that I'm just thinking of something and ignoring it. You know, because sometimes we could be in the company of truth and have access to information that we don't readily perceive or become pregnant with. Truth that we have access to doesn't necessarily change you. I could be sitting close to money, but if it's not mine, I can't spend the money. You follow what I'm saying? Being close to the bank and having access to the funds in the bank are two different things. Living next door to a bank does not pay the bills. You hear what I'm saying? So access to truth that I don't use is not a change of life. But when I use the truth that I realize it changes the way I live as a human. It has totally changed, not just changed my life, it's changed the way I do life. I do life differently, not just today. I, I, I wasn't doing life you know, bad last week, now today I'm doing it good. No, you have practice. Write that down. Say, I have a practice, I have a long practice of doing life. I have a long, consistent practice. How many of you can say that you have a long, consistent practice of a changed life? Because sometimes the tricks of spirituality is, if we realize something today, it's like, I did it. It's like, no, no, no. Do I have a habit of a changed life? I want you to become accustomed to continuancy, not just today. Get used to a habit a long existing practice. Get used to consistency, not just, oh, I got that. I did my homework today. No, no, no. Listen, if you got a history of making Fs and you make one A, your average is still an F when you're at school. And sometimes when you make that one good grade and folks hold you accountable to your grades and you say, well, I made an A. No, you made one today. All right, but let's look at your record, your record, this, the book of life, the book of practice, the book of permission, the book of longevity, the book of, of fulfillment, the book of living. You understand what I'm saying? How many of you can say that in your living, you have, you are living differently? Let me hear you. Go ahead. Repeat after. I'm living differently. The truth has me living differently. A different core thought, a different way of perceiving myself. God can only make God. God can't make anything less than him. God has never made a Christian in his life. God can only make his equals. When God creates a man, the man is just as brilliant as God. He created Adam, a full grown man. Adam was a full grown man at one day old. Adam named the entire universe at one day old. He named everything that he never saw before. Adam named everything in the garden the first time he saw it. Adam named everything. When Adam was in God, before God breathed him out, Adam was aligned with everything in God. When my children were born, all of my children were born knowing one another. They were two years apart, but every one of my children already knew one another when they met because they were all in me before they were out of me. They were all in me knowing everything about me. And when they came out, we didn't have to introduce them to no one. 
when they when we when my children came out of the womb, they didn't have to be introduced to one another. They already knew one another. They were already touching one another and laughing with one another because while they were in me, they were already conversating. Before we were produced outside of God, all of us were already in God, knowing everything about it. Adam knew everything about God while being in God. And when he came out, he named it when he saw it. God can only make what he is. He makes nothing less, nothing less. He don't make any cheap versions of himself. God can only create himself. And you and I are designer originals. All of us of God created by products. And so therefore, you know more about God than you ever could imagine. You came here knowing God until somebody taught you another God. You came here already knowing the Lord until somebody taught you a system of God that got caught up with hell and caught up with this, and you learned the system. And now God is reminding you to come back to the God you knew when you were born. And when you begin to come back to the God you knew before anybody told you about God, When you begin to realize that it changes the way you live your life, you begin to change the way you live without trying to change it. It just changes as you realize without trying to change, without trying to fit. One thing about originality, it never fits with association. Originality never seeks out association. Original things never seek out the status quo to fit in. When it's original, it never looks for acceptance from the masses. When it's original, it doesn't see if there is any other thing by it. Or it says, I'm God, and besides me, there is no other. God says, I'm an original brilliance. Outside of me, there is nothing else. You follow what I'm saying? And so you and I are the brilliance of God, even though you know what I'm saying. You may even read my books, but I'm going to tell you something. Those of you who know me, you you know the book before you read the book. The book is not designed to change your life. You've been talking to the book before you read the book. A lot of you all who have read my books, What you are really reading is the life I've been talking about forever. You you knew the book before you read the book. And if you read the book and still like, hmm, then while you were living with the book, you weren't paying attention. How many of you have paid attention to the books that are alive in your life? The books that are walking with you, the books that have prayed with you, the books that have talked to you on the phone. How many of you have changed as a result of living in the midst of a book before you read the book? How many, how many of you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, if you are, people walked with the word before they had to read the Bible. They were walking with the word, walking with the Christ, walking with word. And some of us will prefer paper over the personhood of the spirit. Some of us would, would, would prefer paper over the person of the divine. I want paper over the person. Am I making sense, guys? Am I making sense? Yeah, you're walking with the word. You're walking with it. The book don't just give an understanding. You're walking with the breadth of the books that you've been reading. What have you done in the presence of the books you've lived with? I'm talking to you. Has it changed the way you live your life instead of bothering you, instead of instead of making you feel guilty? Has it changed the way you live your life? Has the truth of God changed the way you live your life? Not if it makes you do good things. Are you guys understanding what I'm saying? Has the purposes of God shifted the way you live your humanity, the way you perceive life, the way you perceive money, the way you perceive relationships, the way you perceive excellence, the way you perceive work, 
the way you perceive honesty, the way you perceive truth. Has the truth of God changed the way? Not just change your sins, because when we think of God and holiness, we usually think about bad stuff we don't do no more. But it's some good stuff you shouldn't do anymore once you know. There are some good things that are not God things that you should no longer do. It shouldn't just shift you from doing bad things. It should shift you from doing good things that have no purpose with them. How many of you can see what God has changed you from doing good things and now you are doing God things with your humanity? Am I making sense, guys? Has the truth of God changed the way you live? And not just living as according to spiritual subjects. The more we talk about God, the more we think that God is only about spirit. But when you really have a transformed life, you live all of your life differently. And when you begin to live differently, your life establishes a platform for you a platform. How many of you can say that your changed life has built a stage for you from which you exist? And that stage has made an announcement, a universal announcement that you are here. A changed life establishes one's platform. Because a lot of times we like to hang with people who have prestigious platforms and maybe they are announcers on their platform. And because the people trust them, once they announce me, the people will trust me. Uh, believe me, I was that way before. I remember when I was working. I hope I'm not boring you. I was out playing today. Just got home about an hour ago. So I hope I'm, I hope I'm still making a positive contribution to your life. But I remember... Uh, working with Miles Monroe, I just met him. And when I began to, to talk about the divine mind and talking about things, people called me new age. People were saying, I don't see that in the Bible. Do you think you're God? And so I didn't have a lot of people on my side. I had people who were on my side in public, but they couldn't defend me in private. When, 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 they, when they encountered my enemies in private, uh, they would switch and say, you got to talk to him. Uh, yeah, he ain't running me. They, they had to protect themselves from my influence to show other people that I wasn't controlling them. So they didn't have time to really defend me. They were defending themselves to make, let, making sure that people knew that I wasn't telling them what to do. You follow what I'm saying? So I really didn't have a lot of defenders of the faith. And I remember when I met Dr. Miles Monroe in 1996, uh, it was a joy to my heart. And he had a powerful platform talking about purpose. And a lot, he was, and a lot of people liked his in-depth wit and how he put nuggets together. And they would buy all of his books and they tried to copy how he spoke and things like that. And I remember when he sent me a letter, a personal handwritten letter from him and his wife. And my wife and I kept that letter for years. We don't have it now, but we kept it for years. And it sort of like affirmed me. And it, it, it was almost like he was sharing his platform with me. And I felt that if you could believe Dr. Monroe, you could believe me. But I'm going to tell you something, how wise Dr. Monroe was. He knew that people wanted his platform for money. You pay a certain fee to certain people and they'll share pieces of their platform. They'll build a little piece of plywood. They, uh, some people will build a piece of plywood for you to connect for a monthly fee. And if you pay that monthly covenant fee, you get to rent a piece of spiritual plywood to say this is what you're a part of. But you have no access to the impartation of the person's life. And so what Dr. Did y'all catch what I said? And so Dr. Monroe watched me for eight years to see if my life would develop a platform for me. Dr. Monroe watched my life from 1996 to 2004 to see if my life would produce a platform by me. It's to see if my conviction would create a stage for me, that if my life would validate me by building a stage 
for me, not a stage for people to just give offerings to, but if it would build me a new way to live my humanity. How many of you understand what I'm saying? And for eight years, he watched from afar to see if my life would produce a stage for me from which I would exist from, not just to be in public in ministry, but a stage that I would live my life as a husband, my life as a father, my life as a teacher, my life as a coach, my life as a pastor, my life as a jazz musician, my life as an author, a stage in which this stage would house all of my gifts and would house my wisdom and reproduce it for me. This stage would be my orchard from which I was planted in the field and I would produce fruit, hallelujah, in my season. How many of you can say that your life has created a platform for you? A platform, and I'm not talking about an association that you connect with another person and you are believed in because you are with a certain association. Do people believe in you because of you? And I'm going to ask you something. Do you believe in you because of your platform? Has your life produced a personal platform from which you find yourself believing in you? Because this glory has changed the way you live as a woman and as a man. This glory has changed the way you exist as a human being. And you're not existing as a divine nature in private where no one can see. And you are not trying to make people see. You are living what you love out loud to the point all men can see your light. And they give glory to God and glory to you because they see the light from which you live. No one is assigned to see it for you and to say, I see the light because you are living it. How many of you are living the divine light? I think you know what I'm talking about. How many of you doing it by show of hands? I'm living the light of it. When you live the light of it, it makes a stage for you. It creates a platform for you. It creates a platform for you to the point people can see the platform, therefore identifying the ministry you are living. And when they identify your ministry, they're not going to identify you in a church building. You don't have to worry about people misidentifying you as some religious anything. They will call you what they see because your platform will announce to the universe that he or she is here. It's not just going to reveal where you work. It's just not going to reveal a platform of what church you go to. But this platform is going to reveal what God thought when he made you before the foundation of the world. This stage will be what God had in his mind when he produced you. This stage won't be who you're associated with. It won't have a ministry name on it. It won't look like this one. It won't look like that, but it will be the stage that God was existing from when he made you. What stage was God's mind directed in when he breathed you out? And that stage will be revealed in your purpose. Am I making sense? The stage of mind, the stage of heart, the stage of spirit that the spirit was in when he thought of you, people will see that stage. They will see the moment that God was living in. My God, my God. They will see the moment you were conceived. The stage is the moment you came about in God's mind. They're going to see that stage. My God, they're going to see that. That's what they're going to see, Bridget. The stage of time that he was in ultimate wisdom when he thought of me. So when people see me and if they say wisdom, I'm going to say that's the stage he was in. That's the stage that God was in when he thought of me. When I was conceived in his, in his belly, when I was conceived in him, that actual stage of the conception. You understand? 
That's what changes. And when you begin to realize that, it changes how you live your life. You just don't know a lot of spiritual rhetoric that you just pop up and talk about in conversations. It changes how you act. It changes how you interact. It changes how you communicate. It changes how you live your life. And you don't have to force yourself to modify your behavior. You don't have to modify your behavior because you named the name of Jesus. No, becoming one in Jesus will begin to totally transform the way you do life and not the way you do religion. Because some of us are still doing life the way we've always done it. Some of us are still doing life the way we've done it when we were in high school. Some of us are dealing in communication issues the way we dealt with it when we was little kids. Some of us avoiding people and being silent and running away from people the way we've always ran away from people. And the only new thing we got is spiritual effort. Uh, spiritual rhetoric that we didn't learn that church that we could pop up to make ourselves sound smart. But when you look at our life, we still act the way we've been acting since we were 16 years old. How many of you talking? How many of you know what I'm talking about? Some of us are still dealing relationally the way we have dealt with people since we were 12 years old. Some of us are still hiding from people the way we've been hiding from you since we were 11 years old. Some of us still have the same reading habit, lack of reading habit, the lack of skill, lack of discipline, lack of this. Some of us still have those same childlike features since we were nine years old. We just grown now and know how to hide it. And the word says when I was a child, I spake as a child and I thought as a child and I felt like a child and I did things like a child. But now that I'm a man, I have put away my childish things. How many of you have put away your childish things. He said, when I was a kid, I acted like a fool. I, I talked to girls like a child. I talked to guys like a child. I flirted like this. When I was a child, I played with people like a child. But now that I'm grown, I have put away my childish things. How many of you can say you've put away your childish things? How many of you can say that? I'm not a child anymore. And see, a lot of us are not children according to age. We're still children according to our consciousness and the way we act. Still avoiding, still hiding, still lying, still playing, still playing this. Don't know this, playing checkers with this. Still have not become grown people in business and in the spirit of our life. How many of you have become grown in your spirit? You're living your life differently. Hey, y'all understand what I'm talking about? How many of you follow with what I'm talking about? How many of you picking up what I'm laying down? Yeah, yeah, I've become grown in myself. I'm not just remembering spiritual rhetoric. And then when I talk to certain people, I create confusion by bringing up little spiritual questions to trip people up with. I don't need to create debatable questions to make people choke. Live your stage live your platform. How many of you could say God has built my platform? Because when you understand your purpose and your identity, a stage will be built and you won't have to share anybody else's. You won't need association with anybody to be believed in. People gonna believe in you for you because your life believes in you. How many of you could say your life believes in you? Because when your life believed in you, it won't lead you to distractions. A life believed in from the soul won't lead you to things that distract you or tempt you. When your own soul believes in you, it's not going to lead you nowhere crazy. Because your soul is protecting you from death. How many of you can say your soul is protecting you from distraction? Now see, now I'm, finna, I'm preaching now. You understand what I'm saying? Because when you know yourself, your soul is going to protect you from foolishness. It's not going to let you go out there. Am I making sense? Oh, yeah. Yes, I am. See, you have to accept and learn consistency. 
You already know consistency, but some of us don't do things consistently because we're emotionally attracted to a lot of things that won't let us focus because our mind is in 175 places and we feel that 175 places is all good for us. So we are sorting 175 things in our mind. And we haven't grown up. A kid has a lot of interests. You ask a kid what he wants to be, he'll be a dinosaur one week. Next week, he's a fireman. The next week, a kid will be everything that's trending. A child will be everything that's trending. If people are rapper, I want to be a rapper. If everybody's going to school to be a cop, he want to be a cop. If he, everybody going to college, he said, I want to go for business. He said, what kind of business? You know, business. They don't know what type of business. They just want to go to school for business. A kid will be everything that's trending. How many of you find yourself like that, as old as you are, seeking to be everything that's trending? But see, when you grow up, you begin to identify your place in the world. And you say, I want to be what I've always been in me. And when your life believes you, it's not going to put you out there to be distracted. A, a love life is a safe life. I'm telling the truth. He says, when I was a child, I had my mind interested in so many things. I, I talked like one. I spake like one. I was just all over. But when I became a man, I put away my childish things. So before I go, how many of you have put away your childish things, your childish ways of talking, of playing games and communication? How many of you speak what's on your mind? How many of you know what's on your mind? You speak you know what's up. You know how to forgive. You know how to be forgiven. You know how to listen. You know how to learn. You know how to submit yourself. You know what to do because you are living as a grown person. You've put away your childish things. You can say for certain that the divine life has changed how you live your life. And it's not just bugging you, bothering you because you want to do something else and it's telling you not to, it's bugging. No, it's not bugging your life. It's changed how you live your life. It's not just changed your life. It changes the way you do life. How many of you can say it? It's changed the way I live. It's changed the way I exist. It's changed the way I live myself out. It has totally redefined the way I live myself. Not the way I live my spirit. It's changed the way I live myself. Because some of us have spiritual lives and regular lives. And when it's time for a spiritual life, we say spiritual things. But you will find out when it's changed the way you live life, it's changing the way you live everything you are. Am I making sense? Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's when the truth becomes the truth, when it changes the way you live. Until then, it's just an opinion. It's just a spiritual, revelatory opinion. It becomes the truth when you do. The truth of God becomes true when you do. You feel me? Yeah. 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 Hey, if you don't have it, this book is available everywhere books are sold. Amazon, Barnes & Noble, um, Everywhere books are sold. You can get it in ebook version or paperback version from Amazon or Barnes and Noble, or you could write me and I could autograph it and send you a copy. And once again, to some of you, I'm the book that you've been with already. And if my presence hasn't been a catalyst in redefining how you live your life, not that you needed me to live. But sometimes we have, we need examples of what's in us. And sometimes people remind us of what we should have been doing. I'm not the changer of life. I'm a pointer to life. 
but you change your life based on the love you realize and the significance that you realize you are. Because God makes himself. God can't make anything less than him. God never created anything that was a generic. God never created, it created anything that was a slightly different version. And he doesn't create scratch and dent versions of himself. God creates perfect versions of himself. Now we've allowed the system of association to have us begging for acceptance because original things don't seek acceptance. Only a person who's not confident in their truth seeks acceptance. We want to be our own while seeking affirmation from the others. But original things don't seek affirmation from anybody. Original things stand in their own unique place. They don't seek to fit in with anything. They Original things don't seek to fit in with everything else. Original things are not afraid to stand on its own, which naturally makes it stand out. And when we're not confident with being different, we will seek to modify ourselves to not look absurd. And so maybe we've modified ourselves to fit with people because we didn't feel the strength to stand in our own place and our own stage on our own platform that a committed life produces for all of the sons of God. The sons of God has a platform all on their own. And whatever stage of mentality God was in when he thought of you, that's the stage that will be built in your life. But that stage won't be built with hands being laid on. That stage is built with self-knowing and, conf and, and a non-conflicting knowing and belief in oneself beyond everything else. Choosing to go against the status quo for your own life. And that's what grown people do. Children are too interested in everything else to even be original. Children want to sound like everybody else because children seek approval more than identity. Hey, if you have anything that you want to sow or give to this work, we have a lot of amazing things coming. Uh, this Tuesday, we will be at 7676 Hillmont in Houston, Texas, off of 290. Uh, we will be having a charting the course navigational uh, module. We will we'll be speaking on discernment Tuesday night at 7. Um, join us on Clubhouse on Fridays. Uh, you can join Clubhouse and find me and connect with me and you could be in a lot of amazing things. Uh, some of the people that I've certified with Kairos have got a, has gotten a contract with Channel 2. Well, they got a national syndication now. And so they will be speaking uh, in a nationally syndicated program all over. And they'll start in Texas uh, on Channel 2 next month. And so they're part of my system of thought and we'll be doing some things together. Uh, but if you can get this book, How to Love Yourself Back to Power. And some of you, you are already walking with this information before reading this information, okay? Love you much. And if you want to sew, go to dollar sign Coach Pfizer on Cash App, or you could go to www.andrepfizer.com and sew whatever you want, whatever the value of this truth is to you. I appreciate all of you who have done so. Thank you so much for adding to my life. And prayerfully, I've been adding to yours. I'm Andre. Share this if you desire. Peace and love.